All right, so continuing on the next day, after the pod of the stars, well, today I couldn't get out there because uh, my time was mainly taken up in uh, a prayer and spiritual warfare. I found out, you know, I just, a few things you learn. One, uh, someone I work with, he said a few days ago, he felt uh, like he had a couple days where he couldn't move. And uh, he, 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 uh, he was just incapacitated. There was no uh, disease, no rhyme or reason. But it happened to coincide with the two days where I was going through the same thing and I couldn't understand it. I thought, well, it must be lack of sleep. You know, but no, it was a profound fatigue. I thought maybe it was the supplements. And then I realized, oh my God, it's them, yeah, it's formal witchcraft. Now I recognize it because I've been through that before. I prayed heavily, well, I mean, yes, you send it back. Yeah, all that. But that's besides the point. I'm, you know, I, I go through these kinds of attacks since 2002. Um, you know, pretty much nonstop the whole time. So there's nothing new here for me, except that the effects of it at times can be debilitating and even if you're unsuspecting, kill you. People talk about gang stalking and all that. Well, it's, it's part of that. You're targeted. And those you love are targeted. Those you work with are targeted. It's a mass targeting. And um, it's always the same thing. These people are very petty. They want you just to uh, eat you know what and die. That's all. Fail at everything you do. Have everything that you're uh, working on and attempting to work on come to naught, come to a stop. And they actually got their way for a couple of days. The weird thing was, having it confirmed by someone else just yesterday, I didn't realize they had a bad week last week, but, it, but the two days in question were the same as my own. Okay, so... Every August, you know, it's always the same thing. Every August, they seem to really get ramped up, okay? So, uh, prayers of protection, yes. Uh, especially prayers to... Now, I know some people take it to an extreme and claim they've killed witches. And indeed, they have. I've, I've seen the evidence of that. And I'm not going to go into the kind of warfare they employ, but... I'm not really called to be that kind of warrior, although I don't mind someone praying for me that thwarts it, but it's very important that when it's sent back, and that's time seven, by the way, but when it's returned, that they understand what they did and that it was wrong and that, and that, and, and that it has backfired, and that's a very important aspect of it. What they did was wrong, and what they did has backfired. The Lord has our backs, but he, he, he doesn't do our spiritual warfare for us. See what I mean? He can't, I mean, we still have to be actors in this, in this movie. And so he, um, you know, he can't, you know, if, if you're not going to pray, and you're going to sit there and be pummeled, and you're not going to return it and do what you've got to do by the power and blood of Jesus Christ, that name above all other names, and that name the only name of true power. And that has the, the power to break all curses, hexes, spells, hoodoo, voodoo, you name it, because they throw it all. I mean, at one point, um, you know, because I'm, I used to do things like I would travel in the spirit to their location. And then, for example, I detected this one woman in Australia. She had a, a pyramid cage inside a pentagram with a, a figure of me in there. And, um, you know, was doing her 
being on this music forum, but then she was doing her witchcraft on everyone there. She would go by the name Ancient Mother and things like that. And when you see Ancient Mother, uh, excuse me, a, a red flag should be going up, yes. Now, there's no Ancient Mothers allowed around me. Thank you very much. Stay the F away. Unless you want to have a really, really bad day. Unless you want to be seen and tagged. Once you're tagged. And the funny thing is, this, this, this time these attacks are coming from someone that's already tagged. Already cursed. And they're just figuring, well, I guess if they could take us out. And it is us. And then I've also prayed protection around my circle of friends and, and people I know and and all, you know, because they may be unaware of this. But the, the whole thing of being tagged is, what happens is, um, it's a good thing, actually, because it's, it's just like you tag an animal in the jungle. You know, they're, they're, they're under watch at that point. Um, but the other animals, in this case, will distance themselves. And, you know, uh, if they look at their lives honestly, this is a chance for them to do that, to see that they're, that their plans and their witchcraft and their curses have come to naught, that hating other people and throwing curses and doing, you know, wicked spells and doing rituals in, in, in favor of hurting the other guy or the target of their, of their rituals. You know, I mean, anyone can look it up online about, you know, how they go about their business. None of this works against children of the most, most high, ultimately. I mean, it works to a certain extent, like, for example, John the Baptist lost his head. Things went that way. But the Lord, if you look at it another way, the Lord pulled him home, right? It was time for him to diminish because Jesus had to, right? It was time for John the Baptist to diminish, as he said, and he did, and leave the scene. And he, he had done his job wonderfully. Jesus called him Elijah. So they say, well, Elijah owes a death, and maybe he paid one. But then he'll be back as the two witnesses, the one who shut off the water in California. I had that revelation yesterday, that the water in California shut off as representative of Elijah being here, shutting off the water. What do you think of that? You know, it's, it's, it's strange. I just got that feeling really strong. And I wonder... The, if Elijah has to be here in the form of a person consciously saying, I think I'll shut that water off over there. Or if it's just the water shutting off in California is a, is a rebuke and a judgment, you know, against uh, the people running California and what they've done to it, which is run it right into the ground. I mean, it's almost criminal what they've done. It's completely immoral what they've done. What they continue to do to rape the people there is just, it's, it's, it's horrifying and disgusting. How could any lot normal citizen in this country accept what they've done in California to the people? How could you? Unless you're a zombie, which is obviously what the about 90% of the population in California are zombies. So, and, and even the zombification of those people has been done on purpose. I mean, if you really want to look at some witchcraft, there you go. Because witchcraft is, the, is involved in making people zombies. Witchcraft is involved in television programming. Programming through the media. It's, it's all connected. Anyway, these witches who have, the ones I'm talking about, have covens and they have, you know, they have their, their spells and their rituals and, their, and their, their, their ancient traditions and their ancient mothers and ancient this and that. Oh, it's all about the big mother. It's a, one of the biggest witchcraft spells ever put on people was the film... Avatar. Total witchcraft. That's what it's all about. And, um, you know, and all connected to the ancient tree. And then we have the end, we're going to worship the rocks and everything has consciousness and it's all so alive and connected. Isn't that a wonderful way to live, Mr. James Cameron? You genius, you. And I say anyone who worships the created rather than the creator is an absolute idiot and buffoon. An imbecile. A fool. And that's all I have to say about that, Cameron. Put that in your pipe and smoke it, you coward. Running off to New Zealand, you, you hypocrite. He immediately starts a school down there for 
raising the consciousness of children, okay? What, what a, <laughs> thank God he's, he's, you know, maybe it's a good thing he left Malibu, right? Maybe it's a good thing. Now he can be a blight on New Zealand. What an absolute um, evil hypocrite that man is. And, uh, you know, I, I, I was so offended by Avatar and then the way they portrayed the military as a bunch of dumb right wing, you know, all this kind of, they're just stupid guys, you kill me, you know, like that. And then they're so sophisticated, all connected to the ancient slavery. And what he's advocating there through his mind control meme and movie is the slavery of the entire world. Then when things get rough here at home after he's benefited so much by living in the United States, making more money than anybody being in a very top, top tier elite group, he runs away to New Zealand because it's getting rough here. Leaving everyone else to fend for themselves after, you know, having his say in ruining, you know, California. And that's what the liber liberals do. They ruin a place. Now they're fleeing to Texas. After ruining California, the next stop is Texas. And they keep on and going. The most interesting thing to me is um, another witch that's in the news, Hillary Clinton. And the, uh, the, the vicissitudes of that going back and forth. And, you know, the criminality of, of the utter prison sentence criminality of wiping her server clean professionally when the firestorm hit. That is com that's concealment of evidence. That's, there's a number of things wrong with that legally, okay? That woman should be in jail, period. And uh, anyone that votes for her is, a, is, is pure evil and should not be anywhere. I mean, that, we've fired people for less. Yeah, and if you say you like her, there's something wrong with you. But there's this, that kindred witchy spirit thing, that Jezebel spirit, right? Yeah. Around here, look, around here we go through it. The, the, we've seen spells, actually, and, and incantations written on the sidewalk in chalk here. And there's all kinds of stuff like that. I mean, this is heavy-duty. Uh, New Mexico is the, is the, I would say, the Super Bowl of witchcraft. And it doesn't matter what kind, whether you have the Native American, you know, from the Pueblos, the shapeshifters, I call them, and uh, they can fly into your room and try to give you a heart attack or whatever to the, uh, to the general, um, you know, sort of pagan-esque um, women that uh, have kind of seated themselves here, ensconced themselves, and uh, to all the others. You, you see all the stickers, you know, the goddess stickers and the rest of it, you know, you see them. Um, and they're kind of beating up cars. Don't let those beaten up cars fool you. Yeah, they're going for power, not money. Whole different thing. But you've got a lot of spiritual intensity here. You've got the penitente, guys who put themselves up on crosses uh, to, to show their faith in Jesus. Um, you know, basically a, a light form of crucifixion. Some have died doing that. We have the pilgrimage, pilgrimages to uh, Chimayo, the, uh, the, the old church where people feel they get miraculous healings. We have the witchcraft of many different stripes. We have all the, uh, the, the uh, Europeans who went and gave all their, their money to the Bhagwan when they were kids, Bhagwan Sri Rajneesh. They all ended up moving here. Um, you have all the Tibetan Rinpoches and monks and things when, when they fled Tibet. And they came to Santa Fe, New Mexico. I mean, we, we, we're fraught with, <laughs> with um, spiritual intensity. It, this place attracts all that. So when I get, you know, people doing their thing and throwing stuff, you know, you got to realize I live in, and, 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 you know, they see who I am. I mean, there's no, I don't hide. I don't hide at all. And, you know, I know you and you know me and, and. <laughs> And it's just like that, you know, and so, so it's, you, you get an out of all this witchcraft and, and this world system, the satanic world system, you get the, the gang stalking. All right. And um, it's, 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 it's very, very magical, very, very supernatural the way things happen. But if you get to be acclimated to what you're looking at, then you realize that when people manifest, they come together in a hive. They're not there. It's what's in them that's doing that. 
So when you need to address them, you address that thing that's in them. They need an exorcism, friend. That's what you're dealing with. Most of the time, it's not coordinated in some, you know, some office building somewhere. It's, it's, it's happening naturally. And, um, you know, it's, it, it, the other thing, and I think you'd all agree with me, that the gang stalking aspect has gone mainstream. It's, it's one group against another group against, you know, so it's, it's much easier now because it's much easier to see. But still, the weird, spooky stuff goes on, right? And, um, you know, the, as far as the, the other stuff, the electronic harassment and the rest of it, okay. When I was talking about the beam last, remember the beam last week? And then I had confirmation. You know, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, there was the beam, and then, but a couple days later came that day of incapacitation where there was just no energy. This happened before with the spell thrown. That was, um, that takes the energy so you can't really move. It's, it's really a terrible thing, but you know, you get back on your feet with Jesus Christ, and that's, that's all you can do. You know, the Lord never says we're not going to get knocked down. He's just saying be wise as to what it is so you can rebuke it, return it. Lord rebuke it, right. The Lord, the power of Jesus Christ, and by that name, I send it back. So that they would know who sent it back. So that they would know where it came from. So that they would be able to take responsibility for their failure and their utter failure. The only way they can really make it work is if they just get physically violent with you and cheat. Anyway, um... When you're dealing with lambs of God, basically what happens is people get tagged and they get mad. I mean, there's these ancient things and then people, they, they watch you, you know, they watch you over years and they get mad. If you're having, you know, if you have any, I'm talking to Govind about this, you know, people watch him and they say, if he's, if he's happy at all, they get mad. You know, it's like, yeah, that's, they're on the witchy side of things. Okay. So when they, when you're happy, they're mad. When you're successful, they're, they're super angry. They're throwing, um, their hatred is consume them and they're just throwing, you know, and they don't understand why it doesn't work. That it works every time. They never tell anyone what they are, who they are. They go to do all their things in secret. They have their, their, you know, bevy of women or whatever that participate with them. And they go do this and that spell and they put things in people's houses and they, they have all this stuff they do. It's gener these are generational witches I'm talking about. They just can't understand why they can't have any success with us. The answer is, well, they're not totally without success. There are consequences, you know, with people. And, um, but, the, the, you know, if you do get shot, you get shot. You know, I mean, if they do something and, and something sticks, it sticks. You get rid of it, but still there may be a scar. Okay, so they do have make an impact. It's not like they do nothing. But when you're talking about a man's soul, they do nothing. When you're talking about a man's destiny in Christ, they do nothing. Lord never said it wasn't going to be warfare with slings and arrows and people getting wounded here and there. He never said it was going to be like that. You know, we still have to do the time for the crime, whatever that is. And, uh, you know, we've got to fight it out. But when they are tagged... It means that um, it doesn't work anymore, and that's that's the thing they don't say. They go, well, maybe if I try harder, if I maybe if I start, you know, get get some, you know, get you know, do some live abortions or something, you know, if I really spill a lot of blood, if I do something, it's got to work this time. Not if it gets returned, and then when it's returned, of course, their lives are ruined, and they know what it is. And then they, 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 they pull themselves together after getting knocked down severely by their own hand. Their luck running out, their finances running out. That's another thing that happens to these people. But, you know, most of them have beaten up cars. They don't care about finances. They don't care about re re returned curses. They don't care. They keep going. Even if their lives have completely come apart. Because their hatred is so strong that anyone that doesn't conform to their power they feel they have the jurisdiction and the authority to throw whatever they want at the, the intended target for the intent, of course, of ruining their lives, all justified by the fact that they're not playing by the rules, therefore they're, in, they're, in, they're outside uh, the, uh, the game, therefore they are illegal in some way, and therefore they need to be policed and, and, and reeled in. If they're not going to comply, 
and bow down to that situation, uh, then they will be destroyed. And they, they have every right, the authority and the power and the magic to destroy anyone who will not comply. Now, if you comply, the problem with that is you become a slave and you might have fun running around the track when you're young. You know, well, you can have a martini and you can go have a little 50-yard line ticket and you can do some fun things. But I mean, ultimately that runs out. I told you that. Look at these desperate women. They're throwing all these curses and, and they, they, they can't pay their bills. And as they get more impoverished, you know, they're mad at God is what it is. You know what I mean? And they throw it at, you know, God, anyone that's close to them, you know, they throw it there. But instead of looking in the mirror and taking responsibility and saying, you know what? I better knock this stuff off because this is really, I look at my, my kids. I, I, you know, I, I, you know I, look, I, I look at my um, family. It's falling apart. I look at uh, this. I look at that. Everything's falling apart. Obviously, you know, um, uh, my life is ruined, you know, and they get older. When you get, see, what they understand is this. When they get older, no one cares about them anymore. And their power naturally goes. So when they're younger, they have all this power. Anyway, it all backfires on them, and then it turns into a curse on them, and that curse is then put onto their children. So the thing they were throwing at other people winds up on their child. The very manifestation that they were trying to manifest through their witchcraft. It winds up on their children and then on their children. You see, folks, it, 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 nothing goes unnoticed. It all gets paid for. No, I mean, I'm not here to have just an easy time of it. I mean, it, you know, I'm, it, it's, it's, I have to say that when you're talking about subjects like this, so you, you know, I'm sure this talk will attract a whole bunch more flurry. But I'm not going to shut up about it. Just, I know people that won't even put their picture on the internet because they're afraid that the witches will get it and do their thing. I haven't done that. I know they're doing their thing. I, I, this tests my faith in the Lord. And the Lord has been good every time. I'm not saying it's without scars. I have scars. I have traumas from the, from the you know, childhood and things that happened. And, you know, because I was just, you know, I'm just a spiritual person. I'm just kind of like spiritual meaning, you know, tending toward God. You know, that's just my natural way. And that way of witchcraft and being a slave under the Jezebel system and all that, that's the opposite direction of, the, of what I was made to be. There's nothing I can do to change that. That's just God makes one this way, one that way. You, there's nothing you can do about it. So, you know, being that, then I've got to do the best I can, given that I'm a son of the Most High God. And, and that, you know, it's not everyone can be that, I guess. But through default, that's where I wound up. In other words, I didn't wind up there. It was unacceptable. No, no, so there I went through a period of trying to conform in every which way I could in high school and after that. And there was just nothing doing. It just wasn't going to work out. You know, I'm just not the type, the type, the type. There'd be people coming around here every once in a while trying to put me under their, you know, wing, i.e. slavery. And they felt I were getting away with it for about two or three days. And all of a sudden the whole thing would blow up. And then they'd wonder, what the hell happened there? It's like, you can't do it. It's, it's God will break it up. You know, see what I mean? If I don't break it, he's always there. He's, he, you, you, get, you, get, you have an appointed thing you're going to go to. They're waiting for you. Then all of a sudden you get steered the other way. It's, it's, it's just the way it is, man. You know, God keeps his people intact. But you do not mess. You mess with one of us, you mess with the entire kingdom of God. That is the one who created all things, including you, which is. You mess with that. It's like putting a dagger in your own heart. You throw a spell for someone to come into health and financial ruin, you come into your own ruin and financial and health ruin. You throw a curse to curse someone with, with some infirmity, you yourself get visited with the infirmity or your children do or your animals do. It comes right back. You've just cursed your child. That's what's eventually happened. You've cursed your child. 
your marriage breaks up, your finances go down. I would think that after all that, which is, you would say, you know what? I don't think we're going to win here. No, in a war against God, you can't win. That's correct. When you pick on, the, see, here's the thing. You're tagged. When you get tagged, that tag doesn't come off of you for the rest of your life. See, you can go mess with people all you want out there. There's, you know, no consequences to you. Do this, they stumble and fall. Do this, they get fat. Do this, they get old. Whatever, you, you know, what? they lose their money. They, they, everything's a tragedy every time, you know, just over and over. You know, you just keep it up, right? No consequences. You just keep running and gunning like that, ruining people's lives. and Because that's all you do. You don't do anything unless it's selfish, like I want this person to fall in love with me or whatever. So you do something to try to cause that. And of course, that winds up being a tragedy as well. But uh, ultimately, then there are people you don't mess with. See, it's like in the garden, there's, you know, like in this garden here, this God's garden, really, because we don't, you know, it's, it's, it takes care of itself in New Mexico. We have snakes. We have some wonderful bull snakes that do a great job. We, we need more. I, I had one in my house recently because he knew there was a mouse back behind this credenza thing we have. And, I've, and I very carefully got him out and got him, you know, so he was happy because we need those. This was a baby. You know, they get to be huge. You know, they, they, they lie across the road, be across the whole road. Unfortunately, people run them over because they're idiots around here. But that's just, that's just America. Um... Well, they might think it's funny. And all you have to do is drive around here at night with some good lights. You know, I've, I've got like on my truck, I've got extra high power lights. And you see rats and mice littering the entire place. We need more snakes. So we got those kind of snakes. We've got garter snakes. We've got all kinds of snakes that eat rodents, you know. Plus we have owls that eat rodents. And we have a lot of pack rats as well. And we have... Uh, and the pack rats are smart. I mean, they're really smart animal. I don't want to kill them. But, you know, we have to live here too, you know, so there has to be a balance. And this year we've had less snakes. But every once in a while then, and especially in the Southwest, there's a rattlesnake. Now, you can do what you want with these other snakes. You can run them over. You can chop them up, grab them. They're not going to hurt you. But then all of a sudden you touch that rattlesnake, you get bit and you get killed. It's that simple. In God's kingdom, you can mess with this one, you mess with that one, you get away with it, you get away with it. And then there's uh, a son of the most high God, you know, just among the rest of the people. Doesn't look any particularly different from anyone else. And you throw something on him and guess what? Your life is ruined. The answer is after that or her, uh, you know, or them. The answer after that is not to double down on it later, but to realize that something has changed and to take an assessment of your own life. And hopefully you give your life to Jesus Christ and, 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 and go the opposite of where you've been going because it hasn't worked. Look, I see them here in town. And this town is filled with, it's wall-to-wall -wall witches, wall-to-wall. -wall. It's like Sedona. Remember those girls that were the alien girls? Right, the one in LA and the one, did you see that video? I posted it, I didn't post, I commented on it. Bridget and her, she's just the latest crop of beautiful young girls being abducted and in a great experiment to create these wonderful hybrids that are peaceful, loving humans. You know, those girls. Witches. Sedona. It's the same thing. They're witches. Well, what are they talking about on those ships with those aliens? And witchcraft. That's right. Everything they talk about is witchcraft if you know what you're looking for, if you know what it is. Right? It's an ancient, ancient thing given by the fallen angels to the witches so that the, the, the sisterhood would run the world. So what we have here on earth is a matriarchy that rules the world. And, oh, I mean, they make it look like it's a man's world and all that. They're behind all the men. They, they're the ones that get them. Oh, it's been like that for a long time, but I noticed a shift. You got one of the head witches in the world, Hillary Clinton, having trouble, it seems. Seems her power is a bit, some, somehow she seems a bit tagged. I, I don't know. I, I, I've, I've, she's not my, uh, my assignment, so I, I don't know. No, you don't want to be my assignment because then you're dealing with some, you know, I mean, well, take, be so at your own risk because now I'm on high alert. 
Now, if I have to ramp it up and it has to get messier, then it will get messier. And I know what happens when they, when their spells don't really work well. Like, then they want to get physical. They want to meet you. They want to say they're a Christian. They like to come visit or whatever. But they're really just trying to get into your house to leave something or take something or, you know, get some, you know, get get some personal thing of yours so they can because the thing isn't working. So they got to get they got to take it another step. And then if they really get mad, they'll just shoot you and say, "See, it worked." <laughs> then they go to prison. Then they can continue on in prison after their life is ruined to ruin, to attack other people and ruin their life even more. Every time they put a spell on someone, their life gets diminished. Their soul gets cut up one more time. It's like having uh, promiscuous sex. You know, eventually um, your soul gets divvied up in a million, million different directions because sex is sacred. So it gets messed with, you know, and the thing you have to do, same thing with pornography, by the way. Or anything like that that opens a door. Even when there's witchcraft spells, you have to go, well, what have I done sin-wise that's opened a door? No, I'm not condemning anyway. I mean, whatever you've had with your, you know, this life is hard. I mean, you got the flesh to contend with. I'm not saying people are not going to sin and have their, um, you know, their things they do. I'm, I'm not condemning that. I, I mean, I've, 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 I'm saying, well, I'm condemning the idea of sin. It's rebellion toward God and it causes consequences. Sometimes what the witchcraft will do, what they'll do is try to get you, they'll, they'll know your proclivity for sin and they'll throw something on you to get you to do it more, whatever it is you're trying to stop doing. And we're all trying to stop sinning. So from people having affairs, looking at pornography, doing this, doing that, stealing, criminality, all that, that too. It's all part of the, all these things, it doesn't matter what they are, they all have one common thing, uh, one thing in common. They all weaken us and make us susceptible to the control of the powers that be here, the, 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 the earthly powers that be, the satanic powers that be, i.e. to make us closer to slavery. What happens when we button all that up and we, we, we do better with our sins and we put those away, we strive more toward the Lord, you know, in every way, which is also treating the body as a temple. There's a lot of things, you know, I mean, there's, there's a million things. But when we're striving toward the Lord, what happens? We get strength in our denying of the sin, in our, in our refusal to sin. Just like when you fast, you get strength, right? Through not sinning, through shutting those doors. You become intact, you become a fierce warrior, but you get closer to God and then there's the power. And you don't have to go around defensively wondering if anyone's throwing anything at you. You don't have to do that. You just, you come into a place where it's just automatic. It's like an angel. It's just almost automatic, you know, it's like stuff just isn't going to happen to you. It's all immediate. It's all connected. There's no delay. And therefore, um, you would walk right through the world without, you know, pretty much unscathed. But that kind of power, that mastery, if you will, it's not really mastery. It's, it's just, a, 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 you know, a yearning for God. And then, you know, you inherit the things of Psalm 91, Psalm 2, you know, all the Psalms and all the Proverbs that pertain to this issue and all the strength therein. You know, I know people that would go on a Daniel fast. I sort of started one today. I have made a, uh, a chili. And I just started like an impromptu thing. You know, I got a can of uh, organic beans. I think they were pinot beans. And I, and I got a, uh, some organic broccoli that was frozen, but it was really good for frozen. You know, that one in there some peas and a little corn and um, some uh, stewed tomatoes from Palmy and some really good, uh, really dark red New Mexican chili. And, uh, and then I noticed it was like, you know, when I was stirring it up and, you know, getting it, getting it going, I noticed it was like, wow, there's enough here to last a couple, you know, a few days. And I didn't really put much in there. It's funny how it expands. And then, and then, you know, really nice kind of Maui onions that, you know, two Maui onions, uh, uh, I think four small potatoes got cut up and put in there. So it's, it's, there's no oil. There's not much in the way of, there's some seasonings. There's garlic in there. There's no um, dairy. There's no meat. I mean, I'm like, wow, this is like right out of, uh, what well, my daughter was trying to get me to follow this Dr. McDougall guy. 
And um, he has a great chili he sells in the, in the, in the market. That he's his advocate is starch is you know the anyway it's a, like a vegan thing, so, um, but anything like that any discipline like going to the gym you know, uh, doing a fast doing a Daniel fast which is not fasting from food but a discipline so you, keeping away uh, you know things that you normally would have, closing the door to to sins that you're doing you know one, one of the worst sins we do folks. Witches akin to witchcraft. I mean, most of these witches that become well practiced or generational, they're used to just throwing a curse with their minds and seeing a result without having to go through the old Sturm and Drang of, you know, doing the pentagram and the circle and the, and the pentagram and then conjuring the demon and sending the thing with the demon to go hurt you or what. You know, it, they, they're used to, they get kind of lazy in that they could just do it with their minds. And then they run into a child of the Most High. And you know who you are out there. And I know I'm just talking to the choir because I know you've had the exact same experiences I've had. You know, and you know how hair it can be. I mean, it can be, you know, life and death. I mean, and then when they get mad, then they start poisoning your food and stuff. That's all part of it, too. You know, when, when their little hoodoo voodoo thing doesn't work, then they step it up with some poison. Yeah, I mean, you don't want them around you. And they no, you don't know who they are because they're never going to say anything about it. But if you start seeing black candles lit in front of you and things like that, and uh, if that's your housekeeper or whatever, I would say, it's time to move that one on down the road. You, you know what I'm saying? Or someone you work with at work or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I remember the friend of mine came to me with this problem. There was somebody that became a receptionist at his, uh, his firm, and uh, she was just totally, you know, one of those kind of, people that would just stir up the whole office, you know, wreck it. And he just was vexed as to what to do. I, I was pretty simple. She's a witch. She's going to fail. It's a, a lot of the guys that are godly, they have Bible studies, you know, amongst themselves. And it's, you know, a pretty good outfit. So uh, eventually that very thing happened. She was, uh, uh, you know, she just moved on. But sometimes, you know, even a, a snake, a rattlesnake will come and you know, sit there on the porch and then eventually moves on. You know, she eventually just moved on, as I predicted she would. And, uh, but yeah, she would stir up division between, pe between the men. Right? Oh, very, I mean, I don't even know, they have a talent. She was just born with that talent. They do the same thing in your churches, by the way. The churches are actually run by these people. The witches run the churches in America. They run their husbands, who are the pastors. They, <laughs> oh, they do it all in Jesus' name. I'd say the most, you know, some of the more nasty things that, that I've been through were people that were uh, praying in Jesus' name, but they were throwing witchcraft all in Jesus' name. And, you know, they were, they were you know, they were getting, dividing people and, and causing troubles. And, and you could see they were throwing stuff in the spirit and they were traveling in the spirit to come beat you up and things like that, you know. And um, I used to do that. There was uh, uh, these witches around here that were trying to, you know, get me into their, uh, under their thumb. Brother Thomas called, I've told you about this several times, but it's worth repeating again. Brother Thomas called me to warn me, and I said, no, nah, bro T, I'm already, I totally understand what you're saying. And he's like, you know, you, you, you didn't say yes to anything, did you? And I said, no. This is something I didn't tell you. He said, you didn't say yes to anyone, did you? And I said, no, I did not say yes to anyone. Of course not. He goes, good. But during those days, I had to actually travel the spirit, throw people out the window, all kinds, you know, it was violent, violent in the spirit, violent. And um, we have the ability to do that. I don't know how I know how to travel in the spirit. I don't know where I learned that, but I've seen Paul's done that and other people in the Bible. So I guess it's, I don't seek to do it. But in this case, I was... You know, the, the, I had the wrath of them because I wasn't complying, you know what I mean? So they were um, definitely wanting to go at it. Well, you know, let me just put it, the upshot of it all, they law, they, they, if you survive, they lose. In other words, you don't win, they just lose. You know, Donald Trump survived this whole onslaught, and because he survived, he won, or they lost, if you will. Even though he might not have won anything, they lost. 
uh, in this case, there were three of them. And, um, you know, by extension, they have covens and all kinds of stuff around here, you know, really, really nasty. Well, not only did they lose at that time, all of it got broken and broken forever. Meaning it never got going again. It was just like you cleaned out the, uh, you know, we cleaned out the, 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 the nest of vipers and that was it. And it never had another problem again since that time. And they never coalesced together again. And people actually moved out of this neighborhood who were part of the same issue. They just feel like, and I've talked with people about it. I said, what is it about witches that where they feel like, you know, and, and this gal, I think she's been in and out of the witchcraft or it's been in her family. She says, well, you know, they're, they're, especially when they're young, they're pretty girls, right? And they just decide who, you know, they, they, they treat people like trading cards. And they decide who they're going to get. And, of course, that clued me in is when, when this gal was saying at the dinner table that my friend, the poet, was out there on the beach wandering around, I don't know, Topanga, Malibu, somewhere. Who knows? Maybe he was homeless. I don't know. But she was going, we're going to get him. Okay, that's a witchcraft statement. She's a witch. We're going to get him. All right? Um, they decide who they're going to get. That word get is very much in their vocabulary. And they decide who's going to get who under their control. And they do it so that you never know you're under their control. You see what I mean? It's all about control and mind control, especially. That's 99% of the witchcraft that goes on. And then, of course, the more exotic stuff, the spells, the sacrifices, uh, you know, spilling of blood, um, sexual ritual, blah, 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 the rest of, the, of this whole boring litany of their stupid uh, lives. My, they'll sacrifice their own children to move up the ladder. So the question becomes, if you really want back in the game, if they're tagged, sometimes they'll actually become violent or try to do something violent, even hurt their own family to boost themselves to get back in the game. Let me explain something. When you're tagged, you're never get, I shouldn't even say all this stuff. But if you're tagged, you're never getting back in the game. You're done. You got two moves you can make. One, you can die, or two, you can accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and don't look back, and, and go on with the Lord. And, but if you keep trying to do the witchcraft over and over, your children, your um, family, you know, will break up. You will run into, you know, poverty. You will run into infirmity. All the things that you throw come back on you at that, because you have no protection. Tag simply means you're protected... Uh, what do you do to get tagged? Does the person doing the tagging do the tag? No. You just pick the wrong person and you're tagged. The person doesn't even have to know about it. A lot of times they don't. They just have God's protection. And oh well, you made a mistake. Well, the only thing you can do now is repent. And I suggest, that's the reason I'm having this podcast in case you're tuning in. Uh, repent. Don't write me like, oh, it's all glorious down with Jesus. It's going to take you years to sort this out. Then you write me. Write me five, six years from now. Not now. I made that mistake when people are new believers. They I threw off all that witchcraft and all the paganism and all the stuff. I'm with Jesus now. Zef, what do you think? It's like, you know, let's, let's have an email conversation. It's like, no, thank you. Your problem is that the last thing you do is to write a man, to get involved with a man and, and, and in a, an email relationship. We're just not going to do that. The thing you need is to is that you're going to be tried and tested. How strong is your faith? How strong is your commitment to the Lord? How, how, how um, forthright are you when they all turn against you? What are you going to do? I've been vetted, tested, retested, retested. I've, I haven't been as good as Job or as good as Jesus, I admit. I mean, nowhere near as good as Jesus, but not as good as Job. I should have been. I've gotten better at it, but it's been a process. I've complained and I've questioned God, yeah, and I've, I've gone even further than that, and I'm, I'm ashamed of it, I'm embarrassed of it, but oh well, it happened, and I just, all I can do is repent and go on. I know I belong to him because who, where else do I go for help? Who else do I talk to about my problems? Who else, you know, loves me, really? If I go to friends, then they are there, you know, God bless them. They just give me their opinion. That's not good enough. I need an absolute direction, don't you? Opinion 
I mean, that's not going to... A lot of times when I give an opinion to someone, it's just a projection of my own problem myself. And it doesn't really even apply. If that person takes it to heart and goes and does my opinion, it may not lead to the result they're looking for. So i got to keep my powder dry, not shoot my mouth off so much, and maybe, maybe, you know, say, okay, let's pray. And I think that's more of the thing to do. Pray for direction. I can't tell you what direction to go in. I'm not going to condemn you for whatever sins you're doing. I can't get focused on that. You know, whether you steal something, or you, or you, or you, or you have sex with somebody, or you, oh, I'm just trying to name the sins, or you're, you're, you're drunk at the, in the square in the, at, at the noonday, or you're, um, uh, you know, or you're lazy, or you're at jealous and envious, or whatever it is. All those things we do. It's up to you to police that in yourself. And I, I trust that your faith in the Lord is enough to help start you down the road of, of eradicating that. But it takes dedication. Sometimes it's going to take, you know, sacrificing, fasting, things like that. It, it's, 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 you know, the alternative is if you leave those doors open, then these witches and the demons that they send can just have their way with you because you're weak. Right? To get strong in the spirit, we deny the flesh. Right? So when it starts coming around real strong, like I got a friend, you know, uh, well, I'll just talk about Rich since he has a public ministry and he's talked about this before. He'll fast and he'll do a lot of, you know, he'll do things to really strengthen. I mean, he's, he's really probably the expert on this topic more so than I am in terms of, you know, going up against some major, uh, and I still have time going up against some major, you know, groups of people and stuff. It's different than the, the stuff that I face. But the same result, I mean, it's the same thing in the end. People say, no, see, you can't send it back. Cause see, that's, that's being unforgiving and unloving. That's not being Christ-like. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. If you don't teach someone that that's not the right thing to do, they're going to just keep doing it to people and hurting people, and it'll be my fault. They have to know that... You know, when it fails, it fails. They have to know when the, when the curse they threw on someone else comes back on them. If they don't know that, they could stumble and fall badly, irrevocably even. Now, I don't wish death on people or anything like that. I just do what the Lord says. I just, you know, um, you know I cast those things out. I return them so that, and, and the proviso is always so that they know you know, who they are in this, where it came from, what happened, so that they can make a decision. I'm not condemning them. I don't have unforgiveness toward them. I certainly don't hate them. I want to see them change and realize that the law of karma, that God has not mocked what we sow, so shall we reap. If we sow witchcraft, we reap the whirlwind. Eventually their lives are ruined. And I've seen, how many people have we seen, Trish, their lives completely ruined, by this witchcraft, because every time they go do something to somebody else, which is a lot of, or try to mind control someone else, or take someone under their slavery, or every, every time they do that, I've known some of these women who've had, you know, 200 male slaves. And, you know, they send all the succubi and succubus things going on, and they're having sex with them in the spirit, and they just keep them tethered there by, by sex at night and all that stuff. And um, every once in a while, there's a guy that might fight back. But I mean, you know, they, these guys don't even know what happened to them. It's all about control. And they get controlled through their, you know, testicles. I'm sorry to put it that way. But that's how they get control. And, uh, you know, and then they, then they, you know, basically, if you let this thing spread, it spreads throughout the entire society. Oh, the, some of the curses they can send are like, you know, things like... Um, you know, tying your weakness to, you know, I mean, it's really exploiting your weaknesses so that you look bad in the sight of the most time. I and mean, that's a, that's a favorite, you know, um, trying to ruin your, you know, your relation with your friends, family, whatever, uh, ruin your finances, have any, any endeavor that you may set out to do all the work that you've so diligently put in all the discipline you so diligently put in to make sure that the result is total failure after you may be spending years of your life working toward a certain goal to make sure that goal is ruined before you ever get there. Those are the kinds of things they do. 
um, they don't throw blessings. They never do. I mean, they may think they're blessings, but they don't. They're, they're things like um, they want to gift people with financial security and health and all that who they like. That's not a blessing. You know, they do that, sure. Uh, but then eventually they realize, oh, in order to get a pop, I have to do something bad to someone, yes, for something good to happen to someone over there that I wanted to go to. So I have to maybe kill someone over here so that over there I take the benefit of that killing toward uh, the one I'm aiming it at. The sacrifice for the benefit of so-and-so. That's not a... <laughs> Sorry. Yes, they have to hurt things to help things. Now, that's not a blessing. When people of Christ, they pray over you that you would be blessed, that you'd be healed in the name of Jesus Christ, the ultimate power beyond all witchcraft combined. And, um, you know, and that's, the, and that's the thing. That's the blessing. It comes without strings attached. The witches have to do some awful thing to get a good thing, to conjure up the power to then focus it on the thing that they want. Usually it's what they want. And what do they want? They want more money. They want to, um, you know, have a, uh, a, a handsome, uh, you know, thing they can put in a, in a cage, a, a boy toy. They want uh, their children to become rock stars or movie stars or something. They want, you know, they, the, the tip of they want a bigger house. They want a Mercedes Benz. They want, you know, it's all about stuff like that. I mean, it, it, they want to get even with somebody who, who uh, uh, shunned them or, uh, you know, who, who, who thwarted a sexual advance. They want to make sure their lives are ruined totally, utterly, that they can never have a life again. They want to cut their balls off. They want to, uh, you know, win in political office. They want to... Um, be big time winners out there, you know, they're, they want to go do these rituals to ensure their power goes on indefinitely. But the thing about power is they have to keep stoking it up and doing these bad things in order to keep it going, to keep it going, and, and then they're slipping because they're getting older, so then they, you know, as they get older their power wanes automatically, so they have to, you know, find ways of doing awful things to, um, to boost themselves. And if you understand that principle of witchcraft, you understand about 100% more than most people. Why? Because most people don't realize it's a quid pro quo system. That you've got to do something bad to get something good. They don't know that. I've discussed this with witches. I mean, I, I pretty well know what I'm talking about. It's, uh, if they think they could be like a white Wiccan witch and just kind of do these nice things and create these good causes, no. That ultimately, they can't get anywhere. Nice guys finish last. They want to go places, they got to do bad things. Things that are held in secret, of course. I mean, for example, if they're cursing you, and, have your, and if, if your life gets ruined from their curse, they can take credit for that and apply it to their own lives, let's say, to boost themselves. Anyway, it's hard to keep up with it all, all the angles that they're in. But I mean, I thought that we'd just take the opportunity since last week was a heavy week. So a lot of you did say you had or some kind of a beam, some kind of thing, oppressive force. And then, then we, we saw some other um, witchcraft elements last week that, that people I've talked to that are close to me, I realized it hit them as well. So we've been praying. We're praying collectively and we're, you know, we're, uh, I'm, I'm engaged in, in uh, what I already know how to do before I even got to this planet, which is spiritual warfare. It's just, it's second nature to me. Um, I've had them say, well, what about your life? What about your record? I mean, you didn't, you didn't hit the target. You didn't, you know, your novel didn't become a bestseller. You didn't, you know, you, you, your movies weren't any good. You didn't have any, your music isn't on the uh, billboard charts. I mean, how can you claim success? Everything you've done is a tragedy to failure. I'm like, okay, just keep thinking that. Not as far as I'm concerned. You know? Um, it just all depends what your goal is. My goal is not to, uh, it, you know, never has been to, you know, I create because, uh, because I create. I'm not looking for it to save me. I'm already saved. I don't need the world to acknowledge me. I don't, I don't really 
need that in my life because I, I create music because I love to do it and I share it with people and quite a few people. And uh, that's, that's, that's good enough for me. Uh, I'm, I'm not seeking any more than that or I would be seeking it. I'm not seeking it. I have a world-class studio. Um, I've got great musicians around to, to work with. We put out really good stuff. It gets shared with lots of people. It goes all over the internet and all over YouTube. We, I get to a podcast that's also in the top 10 in the world, you know, in terms of my category, whatever that is, in terms of this provider too. I mean, it's not in the world of all the podcasts, but in, in this particular place, I'd say that's pretty successful. And, um, you know, when I'm driving around uh, in my RV <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm looking at everything, I feel so blessed to be allowed to see the land and the, and the, and the things, you know, I just, and I, I wander when I feel like wandering. I have a great relationship with my daughter, my wife and friends. And I don't know what more, you, you know, the main thing that pursuit with me is God. And in that, there, it's, it, it hasn't, I wish it was more. But I know that if I make it a, 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 like a thing that I strive for, it will be denied because it will become a form of idolatry in some weird way. I understand, you see what I mean? So I have to go at it the way I'm going at it. But yeah, I love the Lord, absolutely. I think his creation is just awe-inspiring. I'm I met with the most beautiful view. Um, every day I, I just, you know, I, I take it for granted a little bit and then I travel and I come back and it's like it's re rebooted. I know that I'm getting older and that I will eventually meet with with those issues. And uh, I pray every day about all that. And uh, basically, you know, I, I'm just living in the world, but uh, there are dangers. And around me, there's been these people that have been, uh, well, when they're jealous of me, it's just, it's not really what I have. They, that's what they think. It's really, it's the um, freedom that I flaunt because I don't hide, you know. And the reason I don't hide is because I know people that hide. You know, they, the, there's a freedom that God has given me that, that is not, look, I've had my own schedule, my own money and all that, you know, long time ago. And uh, I could do what I wanted pretty much. And um, you know, I went, I decided to go decadent with it all and went broke and did all this stupid stuff. And I uh, well deserved <laughs> getting my butt kicked. But, you know, I'm sure the witches felt they had a little hand in that. <laughs> but um, I wasn't happy is the point. I wasn't free is the more important point. So I had what everybody wanted, you know, I had a house and I had this wife and I had like a Porsche and I had, you know, friends and parties and different things. And, uh, you know, I could just drive to the beach if I felt like whatever, you know what I mean? It was just drive romantically down Sunset Boulevard in a Porsche, you know, it's, I mean, what more, you know, isn't that what everyone wanted? Drugs booze, whatever, had all that, T totally feeling like I was in prison, you know, just uh, depressed terminally, you know, having to go to, to therapy and having, you know, having panic attacks, just, things just weren't right, yeah, I was just not living the right, I was living in a kind of a Truman Show life. So I can tell you, you know, the material world, I was just very materialistic. And of course that was a bad fit for me because I'm not a materialistic person. I have to have, be fed by the spirit or I, I, I go insane or I die. So I would naturally become self-destructive because that's the only path to, to put an end to it. Because if you don't have any money, then you can't have those things, you know? It just, it was almost like self-preservation. So I would take myself down and other people would gloat and they'd laugh. But even then they were upset with the fact that I would just do what I wanted. But now it's different. When you have the Lord, it's like, you know, yeah, you know, you, you, you can have or not have, whether you obey or you're bound, as Paul says in the Bible, it's kind of the same. And, it's been, and that's been proven over the last, uh, say, 13, 14 years with me. It's been, 
you know, um, it's been low and it's been, it's been high and it's been medium. It's been, but it's the same, it's the same thing. It's the same Lord that's there, you know, and that you're aware of that. And so that comes with, you know, then we're dealing with the matrix prison of this planet. And yes, we're all subject to that, but the only freedom there is, here's what I'm trying to say. The freedom that they're, what they're jealous of is freedom. I get jealous when I see people free too. I saw a homeless guy walking around backwards. I told you this story a long time ago. And he was twirling back. He had a certain thing he was doing. And I, I looked at that freedom and I was jealous. And that's what it is. You can have all the material things you want. Who cares? You know, you have, you know, now people have had, you know, the Ferraris and the boats and the, you know, the airplanes and all the stuff and the, you know, the, the young blonde uh, trophy girlfriend and, and they're just miserable. I mean, just beyond miserable. They're taking all kinds of prescription drugs just to make it, make themselves cope through the day. There's no freedom in, in, in materialism. There's no freedom in the flesh. There's only freedom in the spirit, ladies and gentlemen. And I can say that from experience. I've tried to go, the, well, see, when I was a kid and everyone had toys, I couldn't love those toys. I couldn't, get some, I had a friend down the block who, he would catalog them all from his different aspects of childhood. And I just so envied that, I, it drove me in completely insane. Mine would get lost, broken. Sometimes we just light them on fire, you know. And I just had everything slip through my hands, you know, in that way. And that actually proved, in the end, to be a very good trait. Because I was always kind of otherworldly. So I was looking toward the spirit, you know, because I was not, I was always unhappy with the material world. And the reason I was unhappy with it is because I couldn't hold on. Nothing would keep, you know, a toy wouldn't give me pleasure for very long and or anything. You know, it, it, I couldn't, you know, hold on to anything. Everything kept passing through. And, and you know, I knew I had to find a solution to that. There was a, that, you know, that, that could lead to real self-destructive behavior because, you know, you, you hurt yourself just to feel like you're alive, you know, because you're not holding on and nothing is giving you any kind of feeling or you're not being nurtured, really. And I say, well, it turns out to be a blessing in disguise in the end because the Lord will not let me grab on to anything. If I grabbed onto my guitar, I got a nice guitar over here. I got a beautiful Lakeland bass. Actually, the neck needs, the neck kind of, well, it's okay. They've dealt with the neck. But anyway, it's a, it's a five-string bass. Um, and uh, it's, it's uh, got a really nice tone to it. And I put it through an API preamp, uh, a channel strip, rather, with compressor, EQ, and... Uh, you know, it's an API channel strip that, that then jacks straight into the, uh, my session. Okay, I'm, I gotta wind this up in five minutes. That w gets me into my session. Did we get it? Okay. So it winds me into my session and it sounds amazing. It has a star, kind of a wood, sunburst finish on it, kind of red on the outside with the yellow sunburst finish. There's a lot you can do with that bass, you know, it'd be like the kind of thing you grab onto and kind of go to, go to bed with, <laughs> if, you, if you know what I mean. Well, guys understand that sort of thing, right? It's like Full Metal Jacket, they make you sleep with your rifle and give, her a girl's, give it a girl's name, right? I mean, it's that kind of thing where you can get really into it, right? Not allowed. I just, I just don't. It just doesn't. It's there, kind of hanging on my wall for when I want to use a bass on a track, and there it sits, not being worshipped and loved like it should be. And you know, and I've, I've take the other analogy. I go into the studio. I got something that most people don't have. I've got uh, uh, a pair of Pultec EQs from you know the, the famous Pultec EQs. And now I understand they're, you know, they're like five grand a piece. So it's, you know, not something someone's going to buy for their studio necessarily. Well, it's amazing. The price was four. Now it's, it used to be 35, then four, now five. Because the guy makes them, he revived Pulte. They're all handmade. They're, well, they're not made in a garage anymore. They now have a factory. But I mean, it's still, everything's hand wound, handmade. 
and they're made just the same way they were in 1955, you know. It's an heirloom piece. I should really pay a lot of attention to it. I should really get it, because you put it on a track, it's just what it does to the bass and the mid-range is just, and the high, it just, what it, it just gives it that punch that, that you're looking for. When you need it, it's the one thing that does it without much work. I should really love that thing. Well, I do in a way. I'm glad it's there, but I, it just, I, shouldn't I get more for my money? Shouldn't I be like, yeah, this is a pull tack, you know, yeah. And yet it doesn't, it, <laughs> it's just bizarre. It's, it's, I think the same thing happened with, I used to look at astrology. And I'd look at the astrology and, and you know, the same thing would happen. If, you, you, know, you know, there was a pursuit with all that stuff. And then that sort of went away. Um, all of this stuff went into another place because of the Lord. The Lord has to occupy that place that the Poltec or the whatever, the, the bass guitar or the whatever you have, it takes, it, it, it becomes secondary and when it becomes secondary, it's like it's cool, but you don't, you know what I mean? It's not like, I can't put it into words what happens, but it's wonderful. And if I were ever to put any of these things there, well, I wouldn't do it, but I, it's because it's hard. I mean, you, you take a lot of work to. It, I don't get fed by things. You know what I'm saying? This was a talk about witchcraft because we went through a whole week of the. Every August, it seems, we have the same. What is it with August? Every August, without fail, this, the, all this stuff happens. That's when I had the Navy fight song, the whole bit. What? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, I have to do a, a, a trash run. I know you'd like to go on that trash run. I have to actually drive the trash down uh, with the truck down to the end of the road. You've got to get the mouse. And there's a mouse out there. We've caught something like how many? A dozen mice? Twenty? We've caught... It's been, a, it's been an onslaught. We had no mice for a long time, and all of a sudden they're just here. So, okay, well, I will be there in, I got two minutes. I've timed it exactly. Um, I'm getting a honeydew thing going on here with the, with the trash and the mice and whatnot. So, we talked today about witchcraft. I know you know a lot of the basics on this, but I don't think you realize how many of these people there are. They're everywhere. And they all keep their mouths shut as to what they're all about. You'll never know who they are. You'll never, as Obama said about the drones, you'll never see it coming. These boys that get under their, under, they, they, they think they're running their own lives, but their lives are being run. For, they think their thoughts are their own. No, they're not. They put thoughts in your head and you act on them. The whole society is run by this. Unless you're really aware, or unless you really have the Lord, your thoughts are not going to be your thoughts. Someone else can put them there. Now I know I've had fun with these people and I've had thoughts put there and then I go ahead and do the thing and act like I'm going along. And then I don't. But that's because the thing that was put there was a, the idea I had anyway. So you see, I didn't feel a need to not do it out of pride or spite. Got me? I'm not saying it's always bad things, but control is the, is the bottom line. And they'll put the idea there so that you have this control thing, but ultimately they think they're controlling you because they see, see they can only succeed if they see the result. You're doing this, you're doing that. See, they put the thought there. They know how to implant thoughts in your head. You'll think it's your thought, but it's really theirs. Like that gal that put the, the pyramid cage or whatever kind of cage she put us in, you know, that she, she had us in the center of her circle and she was putting, trying to put thoughts in, her, in my head that I would, and then I wrote that song and then of course she ran away and we never saw her again. She had been there on that forum for years and years, was very well liked and well respected. But you see, she couldn't, she was detected. And when they get detected, when they get popped, they have to run because uh, there's severe punishment for that detection because that's supposed to never happen. 
And that, if I, if I could leave you with that podcast right now, I think I've done a service so people are aware. You be praying every day in, in the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the only way you can break this stuff with that name and praying in that name. That's all I know. And even with that, you still can get scarred and wounded. Yes, it's, it's, you're in a war here. And in a war, you don't walk through unscathed when you're on the battlefield. So expecting that is wrong on your part too. You know, it's just not being bitter if you're wounded and wanting vengeance yourself because then you're doing the same thing they're doing. And then, you know, then Satan wins and, and God loses and uh, everybody loses. You know, the, 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 thou shalt not su suffer a witch to live. And this is what we're talking about right here. You know, because when they're stripped of power, they don't live in that way. Now, I know there's a biblical thing of, you know, the, you know, putting the witches to death back in those days. And then Jesus sort of ended that, that whole thing. Jesus was more about, you know, about this form of warfare as being the superior one. Because it would, because it didn't come with you know a sense of personal vengeance and personal uh, vendetta, which the Lord will never ever allow. You know that. And with that, I bid you shalom, shalom, shalom. I love you. I'm praying for you. And uh, what a wonderful time it is to be alive because of Jesus. This is this. So many things are happening now. So much truth being revealed. It's wonderful.